Is the cricket you love in danger? Is the growth of IPL leading to the eventual destruction of international cricket? And better yet, should we just accept our new IPL overlords? Or should we do something to stop them? In this video, I'm gonna compare the modern association football structure with that of cricket to see if cricket truly needs to change. By the way, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you like it, and let's get on with it. So there's something called the footballization of cricket. Yeah, I know, it's like the soccerization of cricket. What Whatever. you could call it the NFLization of cricket it's the same thing basically cricket's a sport that's structured on the international game so marquee players are contracted by their respective cricketing nations and the cricketing calendar is molded after the international game what about association football or soccer the sport of soccer is based around domestic league you have the Premier League in England La Liga in España you have Serie A in Brazil you have the J League in Japan you have the A League in Australia MLS in America. There are no bilaterals, just international windows when competitions like Euro and the World Cup happen. So what does this Yang think? Well, you guys should probably know by now that I used to be a huge baseball fan. And one thing I absolutely loved about baseball was growing up with the long ass season. You started in April and it didn't end sometimes until October. Sure, baseball doesn't have test cricket, but what we lack in long games, we make up for in a long ass season. So for for me, I would love to see a six month P20 season with maybe two to three months for an international window. But like, who cares what this Yank thinks? What's actually happening in the world of cricket right now? We've all seen headlines such as ODIs are dying, right? But why? It seems like there's a power balance with old school cricket ideas and new school cricket ideas. And let me say that I'm 100% on the side of new school cricket ideas. T20 was created by the English Cricketing Board precisely to draw the younger generation to cricket grounds due to weak crowds which came to see list A or ODI cricket game. We already saw fledgling cricket competitions in the late 90s from our Antipodean friends such as the Super 8s and Cricket Max which failed financially but paved the way for a much shorter form of cricket exist and thrive. So let's take a look at the old school way of cricket that I'm sure a lot of you think is probably best. So one, players are contracted by the national board. You have an open calendar that includes time for T20, ODI, and Test Cricket. You have a very, very short domestic cricket season, two months top for like the IPL, usually just a month or a month and a half. Domestic competitions only take place when countries feel like it, like i.e. during the summer months. This leads to no one specific domestic season that's shared by all countries. You have tons and tons and tons of bilateral matches, yay! Or should I say bilateral series? And above all, international cricket matches are the most important. Those are the most important match of all. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments because I'm about to trash all of those comments right here with what I'm about to say. Are you ready? So cricket is coming to the Olympics in 2028 and we have to be ready. We better be ready. No one outside of India, Australia, or England could really give a hot bucket of piss about test cricket. Let's be honest. It's too long. We're too busy and we have too short of attention spans right now for anyone to enjoy this super long form of cricket. To bring new fans in especially is totally out the window. Many people like Ian Morgan said that T20 is the future of cricket and he's right. Just accept it. This is what the domestic league should be focusing on. T20. This is what the Olympics should be focusing on. It's just too confusing for new fans to have multiple varieties of the same game. Now personally, do I love ODI cricket? Yes, I love ODI cricket just like I love my great grandmother but I know she's dying and as hard as it is to let it go, it's entirely necessary for the rest of the family to thrive. You have to let old things go. ODI and test cricket will never, ever, ever, ever be as popular as T20. Just swallow that. Just accept it because it's true. And I'll be damned if you need to hear an American tell you that. So these are some of the changes or the footballization of cricket that I think we need. Is it footballization or is it just modernization? You be the judge. So number one, make a long season for domestic league. It could even be like rugby where Northern Hemisphere leagues play differently than the Southern hemisphere leagues but make it a good proper length none of this one month bullshit i mean the major league cricket season was like two weeks long that is totally unacceptable tie players to domestic competition so they can grow the sport in that city if you play for the city you should kind of live in the city or at least know the city players are contracted by domestic clubs and then leased to national so it's the other way around get rid of bilateral series test cricket can be played but get specialist cricket 
cricketers to do that. Professional cricketers play T20. You could still have other professionals that say, I'm a test cricketer, I am a ODI cricketer, but the majority of cricketers are gonna be T20 cricketers. And ODIs, just keep it for the World Cup once every four years, I'm fine with that. And we've already seen a lot of these changes happening, and it's all spearheaded by the IPL. In 2022, the IPL added two teams with 14 extra games, and further games are gonna be added by 2027. The IPL broadcasting deal is worth $6.2 billion for five seasons. It's only gonna get bigger, and it's only gonna get better. Players like Trent Bolt are now choosing to sign with domestic competition instead of their national teams like New Zealand. The IPL is also buying teams in other competition. They own three of the six teams in the Caribbean Premier League. They own all six teams in the South African T20 competition and four out of six teams in Major League Cricket. The chief executive of the Kolkata Knight Riders said he wanted to sign players for year-round contracts so they can play in different competitions around the world. And what do I think about that? I think it's awesome. How many players could play professionally for India out of a country of 1.9 bajillion people? 11, 20, 30? I wanna see as many people play cricket professionally as possible. And the only way to do that is to grow domestic competition. That way you could have more people training, the level of cricket is going to rise. And this is just a natural evolution of the game that we saw in other sports. Every sport does this other than cricket. Cricket really needs to modernize with time. Is it footballization? Maybe. Is it modernization? Especially. Leave it at that. See you in the next video.